in darkness. I shall be light. The starting point for this film was to veer away as far as possible from all the established conventions in cinematics and in trailers. Instead of telling a story, we decided to tackle the themes that are inherent at the core of the very universe itself. We we're trying to do something different, something the audience wouldn't expect. We knew from the beginning that we wanted this to be slightly surrealist. And it's really to sort of ramp up that discomfort for the viewer. The main concept that we're exploring in this piece is the idea of this endless cycle of war, both in terms of its slower escalation, but also the way we bookended the trailer with the beginning point with the sergeant and all the corpses falling, and then the trailer ended in a similar way, and that was obviously a deliberate way of promoting the idea of this endless war. Everyone inside this universe really wants to be at war as well. No one wants to break the loop. It's not like they are thinking about going home or finishing their tour of duty. In the face of death. All they want to do is fight, and they expect to die at the very end of it as well. I shall have no remorse. The voiceover is based on something from the Warhammer lore called the Litany of Devotion. Basically an affirmation of what each of these units goes through internally. In the midst of battle, I shall have no fear. I think this trailer really nails the escalation of battle. You come on with a gun, somebody's gonna come in with a bigger gun. And just when you think you've won the day with your giant mech, a even gianter mech will come in and destroy that one. In the scene where they're kneeling down and they're getting struck by this strong wind and these invisible forces, it was really important to make that feel authentic. At the mocap shoot, Abed was striking the actors when they weren't expecting it to get these hits. It proved quite useful. There's so much detail and there's so much history in the characters. We wanted to give their armor a history, we wanted to give their faces a history. So we really weathered them and we got like sort of dinks and bashes in their armor and really sort of pushed that quality. When it cuts and you get this close-up shot down the Space Marine, his face is telling you everything. Even when he takes that glancing blow on the face and he just comes right back to the battle, it doesn't matter. We consciously opted for a very vague approach to how we present the factions. Looking at it, you can tell who we want to present to you as the supposed hero and who is being the villain. All of them are equally heroic and villainous. Instead of looking at it in terms of good or evil, what we wanted to do is represent each of the three races equally and let the viewer decide who they felt more of a connection with. We consciously decided to lock down the camera to allow the scene to unfold because it doesn't lead you from one place to another as quickly or as fluidly as you're used to. It forces you to study what you're looking at. We wanted every frame of this just to be a beautiful painting, a standalone piece of art on its own. Such soft colors you wouldn't think would cause or stir such an emotion. Whenever one of the races is present, there's a very clear color code to the whole thing. We didn't want to do your typical oil gas refinery orange ball of fire. So we looked at ways of adding surreal nature to the palette of the fire and the explosion. So we added yellows and purples and things that you naturally wouldn't expect. And again, it reinforces this sort of abstract world that we're watching. There's a feeling of unease and there's a lot left in for you to fill in the gaps. You go through such a visceral battle And at the end, there's no comfort that actually brings resolution. In this world, there's no good, there's no bad. There is only war. And it's continuous. That's it.